Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about a specific uh, example, this one here, and uh, how I came about to create this. So for the mountain itself, it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. If I go ahead and go to the first one, which is the mountain node that you normally get, what I went ahead and did is uh, altered the overall scale. And by altering the scale, I get a few more shapes in there. It basically changes the scale of the Voronoi pattern that's being produced which means I'll get a few extra ridges. I left the displace alone. It is its default settings as is. And uh, I like the shape that was there, so I was perfectly fine with it. What the main advantage of something like this displace does is it adds more crags and little uh, noise patterns across the surface, taking areas that might otherwise be a little bit too smooth and adding detail to them. The reason why this is important to you is because with more detail, with more noise on a surface, your erosion will produce more interesting results. So if you have a really smooth surface and you apply an erosion to it, you're not going to get nearly as much um, interesting data off of things like the, uh, the flow, wear, and so on. So if you really want a lot of cool textural elements, then you're going to need to have a lot of things for it to kind of bounce off of which is really what it is. If it's a nice smooth surface, we're looking at it just rolling smoothly on down and not doing a lot of damage. But if you, you know, it's gonna go bounce, 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 bounce from different craggy rock to different craggy rock, you're gonna get something more interesting. So uh, the erosion comes in and uh, you'll, you'll see some change. It's probably a little bit hard to see altogether, but um, that's going from this. We can see all that nice little data where it was somewhat smooth before, right? So it adds a lot more interest in there. And then we wrote it and we get smoothness again, but there's lots of data in there, lots of information being collected in there. So um, rather than just take those maps out as they are, which uh, I often do as well, there's something you know valuable in that uh, most certainly, but Rather than just doing that, I decided to do a little bit of an experiment. Most of this um, data that goes back and forth, as I've mentioned before, is, is basically just two-dimensional information. It's black and white data, height map information. And um, all these different features, they run off of that data. They do different things with that data. So uh, something like growth, which uh, is trying to figure out where moisture is going to lie, where plants are going to start to grow with a little bit of randomness to it. It's taking the information, the black and white information, and then it's doing something to it. <clears throat> so if we take a look, we can see the first part of the information. The, this is the basic growth from the height output. We're getting this kind of result. It's uh, mainly paying attention to some of the flow lines, which is cool. But what if we take the wear channel and we apply growth to that? Well, we get some interesting kind of breakup here. There's some neat little patterns that are being taken out of it. And then if we go to the deposit, it's breaking up that deposit into little chunks as well, creating interesting patterns within that region. And then once again, we take something like the flow data and it's breaking that up. And you can see essentially where the flows are going, but it's all being um, chopped into little bits and pieces, which is kind of cool. So it gives me more of a textural approach to these original uh, maps that I would be pulling from here. So I'm taking these individual uh, bits and parts, see, jumping around here, uh, all these individual bits and parts, and I'm running them through combined nodes. So I'm combining these two together, and the method that I'm using in this particular case is I'm using a divide for this. Then I'll take the result from these two plus this one up here, and I'm providing another divide. So I'm just dividing these values together. They're all both set to 100%, so 100% both maps. I'm also going ahead and grabbing this 
and getting some slope information off of it, uh, which is not showing accurately. There we go. Um, and so, there we go. Uh, if we look at this, you can see what I've pulled off with that. And so the slope has some basic settings. I've taken it all the way down to the bottom and taken this up to the 90 range, altered my fall off a little bit. Um, I did run it through an auto level to make sure it's just in the zero to one range. I didn't um, have to do this. Um, there was some weird results over there. So this auto level is, isn't actually necessary, nor is it necessary over here as well. So these are just uh, me trying something out. So you can basically exclude these, you don't need them. They don't really make a big change anyways in these cases. Um, but you can use them to ensure that you you know you don't have anything less than white at some point in your your image. So with those boosted up, we get this, and then this combination produces this interesting result. So all these different additional maps here, producing this kind of cool set of broken patches. I have this other slope that's down here that we're going to deal with uh, a little bit later and uh, it's actually going in and uh, being run through a displace to break up its pattern but you're going to see what that's for in a little bit. So once again we have this lovely breakup pattern and this slope region and we're going to combine them together and it's going to give us this which is a really nice start for a sort of snowy mountain range but there's areas of flow that should be coming here big snow banks that have you know gone ahead and fallen down and that's where we want to bring back this other one right here, this original growth pattern. So we're going to take that and we're going to pull it off and we're going to crunch it up a little bit. So we're just going to make it a little bit more extreme just by taking the white and pulling it down, pulling this up. And uh, it's a quick way of um, manually sort of adjusting. You could do this with sort of other adjusters, but I like the clean visual style when I'm dealing with just color information. I like actually dealing with it here because I can really see the result and kind of tweak it. And visually, it's a little bit easier for me. So I take that and I plug the two of them together and I get those flows. So I'm going from this to this with those nice uh, flows where little you know, avalanches just happen and stuff like that. And the snow is just kind of collected and piled in those those regions. Now I could stop right there and this is fine, but I wanted to add a little bit more visual interest into some of these areas. And that's where this other one comes in. I have let me go over here. This nice little breakup pattern coming off of this other guy right here. It's just taking those flow lines and breaking them up. And again, I've crunched it down. I've really made them a little bit more contrasty. And I want to take that and I want to plug that in to some of these other regions. So I have this slope that is going in and it's just kind of digging into certain areas uh, in the lower ranges, areas where it would uh, not be too high altitude, where it may be more prone to more melting. So I've got that slope. I've got a displace on it so it breaks up the pattern because in this mesh and especially at that low range we get a lot of smooth sharp uh, edges and I wanted those edges to be roughed up. And we're going from this 
to this. And this has made this front region, it's given me something nice as a visual interest. So uh, with placing the camera in this area and then you know adding a few other mountains into the range, just building some different ones into to Gaia. Uh, in fact, I can go ahead and change all these settings just to build another mountain range to get much the same kind of results just by going ahead and resetting all the seeds and then updating them and it will build me another section. So now if I want to tweak any of this other stuff um, later, of course I'm going to have to export all this stuff out. So of course I'm going to need this map so I'm going to grab this one, right click and we're going to save that one. And that one's going to build and um, I want these original, well, I want the height map, and this is the height map, so we're going to do this. And when we do this one, of course, we automatically get uh, all the output nodes that come with it. In inclusion to this, I think maybe I will go ahead and output some of these other nodes just to grab the information that's coming off of them as well. and bake them out and uh, perhaps uh, maybe taking the slope data as well. So with those maps I can do any additional editing that I may want to do say in Photoshop. Um, I can use those for masks for other things as well just to, uh, to work with them. So this has been an interesting little exercise. This is basically just a snow mask. So this isn't the final texture. What this is is a uh, an initial result for where all that snow is going to go and then I'll do other things to this to add uh, textural detail to the snow, um, add regions of dirt and mud down in here but more of a rocky texture up into this black area up here so that I can uh, get a better overall look to my scene. Maybe add some clouds in here uh, just to give a, a cool look to it but all that's going to happen in, in a separate piece of software. So. Really all this is is just that starting point. It's the um, snow mask to know where the snow is going to be and where it isn't going to be. One small portion in a very um, detailed set of uh, processes. So as usual, I hope this has been an interesting kind of exploration of how to approach this. Ultimately what you should take from this is that you can play with different kinds of tools in creative ways because all it is is just height information in the end. So a lot of these maps that come out of here you can do all sorts of creative and interesting things, experiment. I tried different methods with this combine. In fact I went through every single result just to see how the different combinations would play against each other. I didn't have a clear idea of how each one of these was actually going to look. I just was really interested in the fact that they were breaking it up and uh, we'll probably go into the growth uh, tool, the actual node, at a later point.